Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to my channel. Today I'll be listening to another voicemail. This one is from Danny. Let's listen to what Danny has to say. Hello, Lloyd. Um, my name is uh, Danny, and uh, I've been an avid um, watcher of your videos for years and um, discovered you pretty much when I, uh, began my fading process and you were uh, instrumental in helping me with that. And, um, <clears throat> I guess the, to cut a long story short here, the main purpose of my voicemail is to kind of briefly, um, piggyback off the previous video you released, uh, where Lilith called and what she said really hit very close to home. Uh, it actually had me, uh, choked up and in tears myself because I could relate so much to what she was saying. And, and I thought your advice to her was very sound. Um, before I say what I'm going to say, I, I do want to express that I, I very much am, am, uh, glad that you encourage people to get help professionally. Um, and I have done that and I'm in the middle of still doing that. Um, it's amazing the little things that uh, that being raised in this organization takes from you and, and you kind of don't realize how you get through day-to-day -day life with, without knowledge of the basics. Um, and <clears throat> touching along what Lilith was, was mentioning, um, you know, I, uh, again, there's a lot of the story that I'm not going to include for, for lack of time, but I met uh, essentially my soulmate when I was 18 years old, uh, I knew what love was. I was head over heels in love and, and she was with me. And due to the, uh, fact that she was not a Jehovah's witness and, uh, fear of, you know, reprisals from family members and, and not being able to, for example, talk with my brother and things like that, I had to, um, let her go begrudgingly, but I did. Um, and long story short, I, I kind of don't really know or haven't been able to recover ever since may sound kind of ridiculous. I, I hope it doesn't, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I was 18 then I'm, I'm in my late thirties now. And I basically feel like I almost invested all my my financial, let's call it my, if love was money, uh, I, I invested all my love dollars into that one stock. And because it hurt so much and because I knew that she was the one, um, it kind of left me emotionally broke. Um, and when Lilith mentioned, I don't really know how to love, I think that's kind of how I feel uh, in terms of I don't know that anything or anyone else is worth it now. And I'm just so bitter and so angry that I don't feel that it would be fair to whoever the next person would be um, to try to learn how to love without feeling uh, like I'm like I'm settling for second place, you know, like a silver medal, for example, um, when my heart was set on someone else and, and you're, you know, this next person would basically be the choice I'm left with, you know, and that's not fair to the person, but I also don't <clears throat> fully know how to move on. Um, and that's kind of my point. Um, I'm not sure if it's a question or a statement or maybe a little bit of both, but, <clears throat> um, when it comes to loving someone, whether it's in a relationship or, or family members or anything, it's very challenging when you have an organization that pretty much preaches um, superiority and <clears throat> that they're better than everybody else. And, and they hope that they can bring people to safety because, you know, you're not as lucky as they are. So that's just kind of what I wanted to say. I know I kind of went all over the place, but it was a question and a statement, <clears throat> I guess, which is, I don't know that you can fully ever recover. And I know I have very good sessions with my therapist about all this, <clears throat> but, um, I feel that, um, there's a lot of us that are XJWs that are lost and we're, we're, we're trying to pick up the pieces, but we're not even sure what pieces are 
what what pieces we need to pick up. So thank you for everything you do, Lloyd, and uh, look forward to po uh, possibly hearing from you. Take care. Thank you very much, Danny. Wow, that's a really good message. And thank you for sharing so much there. I think you raised some very interesting points. And I'm very glad to hear that you are receiving therapy. That's the most important thing. So I can save a lot of time there um, that I would have otherwise spent encouraging you in that direction. I think what we're essentially dealing with here is sexual repression or the effects of sexual repression. Because when you're raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, of course, you're not just told you have to be heterosexual, you're not allowed to be gay, you have to only marry from among fellow believers. Um, oh, and by the way, you're not allowed to masturbate. So lots of constraints are placed upon you in the area of love, romance, sexuality that actually have far-reaching consequences down the line that can leave someone really damaged emotionally. I'm not suggesting you are damaged emotionally. Maybe you feel that way. The point is that I understand and I get it. And I think lots of people are in this situation where there's a lot of resentment and frustration once we realise the full magnitude of what this organization took from us. And that's really what abuse is all about, isn't it? Abuse is when someone takes something from you or damages you or does something to you that can't really be put right. And obviously, one of the worst ways that people can do this is through the abuse of children through molestation. What we're talking about here isn't obviously as extreme as that, but it's still, in my view, a form of, of abuse. It's a form of damaging someone by placing restrictions on them in an area that is completely harmless. You know, two 18-year-olds, I don't know how old you were when you met this girl. Let's say you were 18 as well. Two 18-year-olds falling in love oh no, uh, this needs to stop because actually she isn't in the religion and he is. It's just absolutely outrageous and it is totally understandable. I mean, you say at the beginning, this is you might think this is kind of stupid. I don't, I really don't. I completely understand. Now, having said all that, I do think that what we have here is a story of, will you call this girl your soulmate? And I, there's no possible way for me to understand the depths of your feelings for this girl. I think it's possible that you're placing unrealistic restrictions on yourself when it comes to evaluating the possibility of falling in love and finding your soulmate. So you seem to have convinced yourself that a girl that you met when you were young is the love of your life, can never be replaced by anyone else. You had your chance, you missed it. Anything else is going to be second best, or as you put it, a silver medal. I'm not convinced that this way of thinking is number one, realistic, or number two, healthy. Because the truth is, the girl that you met when she was 18 and you were young, she no longer exists. And you may wonder why I say that. It's because we all change. You, if you're in your late 30s, are not the same person as you were when you were 18. I am not the same person. Lloyd, who is 41-year-old Lloyd, <laughs> is in almost every measurable sense a different person than 18-year-old Lloyd. It's just the way it is. 
it's beautiful when you can have two childhood sweethearts meet when they are young and they can fall in love, get married and spend the rest of their lives together. It's very romantic and very sweet, but in reality, it's not going to work like that in every case. And even when that happens, those two people are changing. They're changing together, but they're not the same people as they were when they first met because life changes you, experiences change you, relationships with new children that you have or whatever, um, trauma that you go through, um, difficulties, good times, bad times, all of these things force you to adapt so that your personality, quite frankly, is different after decades than it was when you were young. So try not to overly idealise this girl and I'm saying this as someone who had, I had my own sort of romance when I was this age. I write about it briefly in my book, The Reluctant Apostate. There was a girl at my college. Yes, I went to college for two years, <laughs> but only so that I could find a good job and pioneer. I went to college for two years and there was a girl in college called Tracy. I was head over heels for her and obviously it was doomed because I knew that I couldn't have a relationship. I didn't, maybe um, I'm not completely clear on whether there was a relationship to be had. I spent years looking back on that thinking she was the one. If I hadn't been so constrained by my beliefs, I'm pretty sure something would have happened there. So I, I understand where you're coming from with this. And I understand this kind of rose tinted view of people from our past who we, we care deeply about. But I think you're being unfair to yourself when you suggest or you imply that it's impossible, that there will never be another Tracy or there will never be another girl who can be your soulmate, who can be the one. No one is asking you to take the silver medal. Go and get the gold medal. Go and get the soulmate. You just haven't met her yet. And yes, it's hard. It's really hard to find them. But give yourself chance. You're in your late 30s. That's still very young. It's at least younger than me. <laughs> give yourself chance to find your soulmate. Don't be so hard on yourself. You don't have to settle for second best. If it feels like you're settling for second best... If it feels like it's a silver medal, then it's not the one. And you have every right. In fact, you're doing the person a favor if you say, look, I don't think we're right for each other. You're doing them a favor. But give yourself the opportunity to meet people. And you'll know soon enough whether there's a possibility of them being right for you. Frankly, it just sounds as though you need to date, you know, without wanting to be too too crude or too simplistic. Um, I think you need to expose yourself to new experiences and, and new people and try not to be too constrained in, oh, it needs to be like this and it needs to be like that and it needs to be this sort of person or that sort of person. Obviously, it's good for you to have in mind what your needs are emotionally and otherwise. But open yourself up to the possibility that actually that 18-year-old girl, although she could well have ended up being your soulmate, isn't your soulmate. She's someone who existed in the past and is now most likely a completely different person. And actually your soulmate is waiting for you. You just need to find them. You just need to be patient and believe in yourself and persist and you'll find them. Very, very difficult for me to believe that there isn't someone out there. It's a big old planet <laughs> with nearly 8 billion people on it. It's very difficult for me to believe that there isn't someone who's absolutely perfect for you. Or, dare I say it, several. 
You just need to meet one of them. So <laughs> feels like a proper agony ant <laughs> voicemail this. And uh, I'm straying into areas that I don't pretend to be an expert on. But I hope that some or all of what I've just said there is useful either for you, Danny, or for others who are watching. If you would like to leave a voicemail, <laughs> the address to go to is speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering that if you don't want me to broadcast your message, you need to be very clear about that in your message. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the Lloyd Evans channel for more such videos. And as always, thank you for watching.